everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry it's been a while since we did a video, things have been kind of crazy. I finally have the time today to sit down and do another video and this one, I really hope you guys get a lot from it and you enjoy it. It is um, 10 tips or things that you should know when bringing your puppy home. So we have some seven week puppies here that are gonna help me with this video. So I have Amelia's letter here. Uh, they're seven weeks old and they're off home next week and I thought this was the perfect chance to maybe sit, to actually do a video on some things that will help new families when they bring their puppies home. So here they are, they're gonna be helping while I'm doing this. So congratulations, the day's here, or almost here when you're watching this, and you're gonna go pick up your new puppy. We're so excited for you because there's really not much else in the world that kind of compares to the excitement of having a new family member. It's really an, it's an exciting time for anyone who is a dog lover. First tip I have for you guys is when you go to pick up your puppy, uh, try to go straight home. It can be difficult because obviously you want to show a puppy off to your family members or maybe you have family who say, oh, stop by my house on the way home so we can see the puppy. Um, as great as that is, it's good for you to socialize your puppy and we'll get into that later on. Try to go straight home. There are a lot of changes in your puppy um, that day when they're leaving their litter mates and leaving the mum. Go straight home. Give your puppy a chance to settle before introducing them to new people and new things. Number two, food. Try to keep food the same as what the puppies are already used to. Find out from the breeder what food the puppies are on and try and purchase a bag of it. If you're unable to get it, ask the breeder if it's possible you can purchase a little bit from them. I personally always send a little bit home with the puppies if people aren't able to get it so that they can transition over. When transitioning to new food, if you can try and keep the puppies on it, ideally for a month. Some people are not able to, obviously in circumstances, if you're not able to, then keep them on for a few days, a week, a couple of weeks if you can. Um, obviously the longer the better, just tell they're settled into their new environment, into their new family um, before changing foods. If you do decide to change the food, do so gradually. You want to take the old food and do um, start with 75% of the old food, 25% of the new food, then switch. Do that for a couple of days, do 50-50 for a couple of days, and then switch again gradually from 25 of the, the old food to 75% of the new food before you switch them over completely. The food changing process should take about a week. I follow the breeder's instructions regarding schedule as well for feeding. Some breeders will um, ration their puppies. They eat two, maybe three times a day. Um, I've always free fed my puppies. With free feeding, you have huge benefits. Puppies don't become, or dogs as when they get older, they don't become possessive of their food. They have it available to them all the time versus rationing where they only get set meals and I find that they also have a lot more digestive issues when they're rationing as opposed to free feeding. But the main thing is keeping the food schedule and the type of food the same so you're not making too many changes at once. So number four, this covers the topic of soft stools. So sometimes when puppies go home, they have particularly soft stools, maybe runny tummies, and it can be a little bit, um, alarming or maybe disheartening at first because you think oh my goodness like is something wrong with the puppy what's going on um so long as your puppy is not throwing up and is active and not lethargic then there's really nothing to worry about with soft stools if they're soft or particularly runny it can just be the change in environment a little bit stress showing and that's how puppies show their stress if they do have any issues with soft runny stools it's you can give them some probiotics or some pumpkin puree. I always give my puppies probiotics before they go out the door. So your puppy will probably be in more likely, because most breeders do now, is have a warming schedule and immunization. They usually have them given the first vaccine and deworm three times. Uh, it's a really good idea to try and avoid public areas if you can. Um, tell your puppy is fully immunized. Here in Ontario, puppies are immunized three times with the distemper combo and then given the rabies on the, on the third visit. No. Hello. So number five, house training. Oh, don't we all love house training? It's so much fun. <laughs> when you get your puppy home at eight weeks of age, 
It's a good idea to start taking them out straight away, even though you don't want to take them to public areas or go on long walks yet. It's a good idea just to get them out on the grass, out in your lawn um, or in your backyard or something and just get them going, getting used to going outside. It's, it will save you work as opposed to doing pee pads or um, any box training inside. Just get them straight outside onto the grass. Some people like to choose a designated area where that's where their puppy will go go potty so they also like that they'll carry the puppy to that area when they go potty try not to give them any treats at that point try to encourage them just with lots of praise and I always <laughs> Jamie laughs at me because I'm very high pitched when I write phrase and my mom's like yay you're really good good job but it's really good because they get excited with that they react see <laughs> they react to it and um, they know they go oh I did something good oh they they're happy with that so then they learn, okay, this is what I'm doing outside. This is really good. So the signs of them needing to go out, we always recommend as soon as you see them eating or drinking, watch your puppy constantly. When they're eating and drinking, pick them up. As soon as they're done, take them outside. You usually have about five to 10 minutes. So we pick them up, take them outside, have them walk around. Try not to get them to play. If they're running around playing, try not to encourage that until they've gone potty and then once they've gone to the bathroom then you can play um, but get them lots of praise when they're outside when they're inside if they're walking around inside the house you might see them put their nose to the ground they are sniffing a lot they'll be walking while they're sniffing they might zigzag if they start going in circles it's a definite sign especially for a poop that they will um, go in circles before they actually do it. So you have enough time that if you're watching to pick them up when you see that behavior and get them outside. So we, uh, we were introduced probably about three or four years ago to the doorbells. And the doorbells are really great for house training. Um, when we got Remy, he's super, super smart. When we got him, I bought them on the Monday and by the Friday he was ringing the bell to go outside. So they look like this and you hang them on your door. And then you just teach the dog to, to ring the bell to go outside. You can ring it yourself, you can take their paw, you can take their nose and just tap the bells and then that, that they make the ringing sound. The only thing that I did find with, with Remington was that he figured out, oh, if I ring the bell, she'll let me out. Smart. So sometimes he would just ring the bell because he wanted to go outside, he didn't actually have to go bathroom. So that is something that you kind of run into, but for the most part, they work really, really well and I definitely recommend them. So number six, crate training. <gasps> I know, I love crates, they're great. Some people really don't like them and I know that there's a, a reason for that. They think that some people just put their puppy in a crate or dog in a crate and leave them. But crate training used correctly is really, really good. It's a great method of training. It also helps with house training. Um, it's really good for nighttime training. Um, it gives the, the puppy a, their own place. It's their place where they can go and they can lie down and just feel safe and comfortable. There are different types of crates you can get, obviously different sizes for different sizes of dogs, but there are two um, particular ones that have, you've ones that are completely covered and they just have the door on the front and then you have the ones that are wire crates that come with the divider. We always like the wire crates that come with the divider for that reason because then you can section off as you go. The other ones are pretty good too. I again like those for younger puppies. Um, it gives them more security and more shelter. So it's just personal preference which one you like. But the divider section is a really, really good idea for crate training because you want to give them enough space that they can stand up and turn around. You don't want them to have too much space, otherwise they're gonna to go to the other side of the crate and they're gonna soil in it. And as they grow, you take that divider away and then they have the full space. When they are fully grown, they should be able to stand up and then turn around. That's as much space as they should have. Their, are, their backs should never be arched. They should never have to put their head down. The head, top of their head should touch the top of touch the top of the grate or have some space above it. Um, ideally, have some space above it, but you do not want to ever have your dog arched inside the crate. That would, would be too small. You're gonna put a lot of pressure on their joints and their bones and it's not good for them. So for sleeping at first, first nights can be a little bit um, hectic. Sometimes puppies sleep right through the night. I hear back from customers who say, yeah, the puppy slept right through the night. They didn't, they didn't get up till like seven o'clock, eight o'clock next morning. They went to bed at 10, slept right through to seven, eight. Didn't soil in the crate, did fantastic. Others woke up at right in about three, four o'clock in the morning. 
and some will be pretty unhappy through the night. Um, as a breeder, I always send my puppies home with a stuffy with the mother scent on it and the litter mate scent on it. Now, I know a lot of breeders don't do this and some people will ask, oh, you know, can I bring a blanket? Can I bring a stuffy and we can rub it down on the mum? I personally don't do that just for the sake of my litters and sake of my dogs as it can transfer virals from outside. I try to keep everything within my kennel. I'll go and buy stuffies, I will wash and sanitize them and then I'll rub them down on my mum and litter mates and then send them home with the puppies there. And I know that they are safe and that there's nothing coming in to my kennel. So that really helps, having the scent on it at night just really helps the puppy to feel settled. They feel relaxed, they feel calm, they feel safe. And um, just having some familiar smells around them when they're in an unfamiliar place. White noise and music works really, really well. You can put that, what Jamie used to do was put his phone on with his music and set it on top of the crate and the puppy would just settle. We did that with Mindy and she settled down really, really well. The other thing is white noise, just having some background noise so that they, they have something that kind of just makes them feel safe and comfortable. The reason why is because when they're with their mother and they're with the litter mates, they're playing with each other, they're not sleeping, sometimes they're not sleeping all night long, sometimes they do. They're used to being around each other and having the mum, having that warmth, that smell, and they are not used to complete silence. So it's good for them to have something just to kind of take away that silence come bedtime. A lot of people ask me, you know, where, what should I do with the crate? Like, where should I put it? It's really just personal preference, but we always encourage people, like, you know, if you don't want your dog on your bed, you don't want your dog in certain rooms, don't start it when they're young. Otherwise, they will expect it. You don't want to change halfway through and say, okay, now the dog's not allowed in there. It's better to start right from this, right from eight weeks when you get your puppy home, make your rules, decide what you guys are comfortable with. Do you want your dog up on the couch? Um, or if you, dog, you want your dog in your bed. Some people don't like that. We personally didn't ever have the dogs up on the couch. We don't allow them all up on the couch. So that's just our, our preference. But some people are okay with that and it's really just up to yourself where you want it. So for crates, same idea when you come bedtime, if you want to take the puppy in the crate and have them next to your bed or next to the couch, or you set up a small area and um, a mudroom or a laundry room, you can have a, a bigger crate, uh, like a divider or a baby gate or something. You can put some newspaper down and let the puppy come and go for a few nights before you lock them in the crate if they're really, really stressed out and they're crying a lot. Um, or you can just put them in there and leave them there. It's, it's really just personal preference. Everyone's different and there are different ways of doing it. There's no right or wrong. It's just finding what works for you and your puppy. And one tip, never wake a sleeping puppy. You do not want to wake your puppy through the night. You want your puppy to sleep all night long. So if your puppy wakes you and cries, that's a different story. But don't wake your puppy to take him out because if you do this, he will get in the routine. You do not want a dog a year, two years old with an established routine of, I need to go outside at three or four in the morning. The dog does not need to go out three or four in the morning when it's a year or two years old. It's just the first couple of months or first little bit when you get your puppy home. So number seven, what kind of toys should I use? What should I buy for my puppy? So there's different kind of things you can get in the market. There's so many different toys nowadays. It used to be, I think, back in the day that kids and dogs would just get a stick and a, <laughs> a ball. So every breed is different. Um, it really just depends on what kind of dog you have. For springers, I always encourage stuffies. Stuffies are great. Obviously, you don't want them eating any pieces off. If they fall off, you gotta grab them straight away. But they really do enjoy stuffed animals. They um, they might chew them, they might pull the fluff out of them. Again, it's just watching to make sure that they don't do that. Uh, if they have any buttons, try to avoid toys with buttons on them. Dollar store have little cheap ones like that. PetSmart do really great toys as well. We always recommend the Kong products. They're really good. Some dogs, funnily enough, don't really like them that much, but most dogs do. They do really well with the Kong products. Kong have it's a really, really hard rubber. It's They're almost indestructible and they have a hole right through the middle of it and you can put some treats in there, so put some um, peanut butter in there and just let your dog have a little time out in that and lick the peanut butter toys. So it's a good idea to have a good variation of toys in your house just to keep your puppy busy. So number nine, training. 
Training is fun, but it can also be a little bit stressful because sometimes people don't really know where to start or you've got a dog that maybe just isn't listening the greatest it can. It can. When you've got your puppy home, obviously we want to wait till they're fully immunized before we start any puppy classes, but you can start on some basic obedience right away. You teach your puppy with treats. You can teach them how to sit, teach them how to lie down, teach them how to shake a paw. It is a good idea to um, teach them as well when it comes to feeding time to sit when you fill up their bowl and you put the things. Now we free feed our dogs, so we'll fill up their bowls, we'll make them sit, and then we'll put the bowl down to them. Even if you're being free fed and you do that twice a day, it just makes it just gets you in a routine to teach your puppy, okay, they have to sit and wait for their food. They don't get it whenever they want it. They have to work for it. They have to do something for it. So start early with, with uh, training. For feeding as well as another tip is, to put your hands in the food bowl, again, if you're free feeding, you shouldn't have much of a problem with this. This can more develop with dogs that maybe are a little bit more possessive of their food. When it comes to, especially with rationing, uh, they can get a little bit food possessive or food aggressive. Or even when you are free feeding, just put your hand in the food and get them used to taking food from you. That it's okay if people put their hand in your food, then they don't need to try and protect it later on. So number nine, with Springers, they are particularly very excited when they see people. So typically as young puppies, they will get excited to see you and they can be um, jumpy or they can be just a little bit more active. So one thing that I always try to encourage people is try not to let your dog jump up a lot or go up and down stairs. You just don't want to put the pressure on those joints when they're young. It's a good idea to give them an area that they can play, get down on the floor and play with them and um, try to avoid them from jumping up on the couch or jumping up at you, going up and down the stairs. Try to keep them just on, on a place where they're going to be uh, soft on the joints and they're not going to put too much pressure on them. Try to avoid long walks as well. Try to keep them on the grass as opposed to on concrete. Those kind of things that just help with them with your puppy's legs and hips. So especially when you first get your puppy home, it's a good idea to carry them up and down the stairs or lift them up if you're bringing them up onto the couch. Try not to let them jump down off the couch. I know that can be hard because some dogs just do it. that They want to be independent and they're excited and they kind of get a little bit crazy. But it's a good idea if you can to try and control that. Help them out as much as you can um, with, those are, with that area. So number 10, finally, enjoy your puppy. Enjoy the time that you have with them. It's... The puppy's age doesn't last forever and I know at the time sometimes we're tearing our hair out because we're trying to do everything right and trying to do everything perfect and it does take some time before the puppy is doing what you want it to do consistently. Um, but it's a really fun stage, they're really, and they're so cute. And so <laughs> enjoy this stage, enjoy it, take time to play with your puppy, take time to love your puppy, be positive, be happy and don't get discouraged, remember that the, um, the nipping stage and the house training does eventually get easier and <laughs> it does get easier and eventually you've got a dog that um, knows exactly what it's supposed to do in your home. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed and maybe learned a lot, maybe it helped you out a lot. If it did, please give us a like, give us a comment as well and let us know what you're thinking. If you have any questions um, and anything that I've talked about, I'd love to answer them too. And uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button and you will get notifications when we upload a new video. Until next time, thank you everyone for watching and for following our journey. We'll see you on the next one.